Okay, um, Oli, just whilst we're talking about provincial provincial rugby, and we will get onto the t your test career later, and I mean, you started off at the Cheetahs, and then you ended up at the Sharks, and I remember you telling me a story about how your move to the Sharks happened. Somebody abused you at a game, I think it was in Potter's Dream or something, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was actually changed your whole career. <laughs> It was, but it, it also a build up. Nothing ever happens just quickly with me, you know, the story. There's always a build up of emotions that get to that. So what happened is I, I just missed out on the on the World Cup squad. Yes, and I was I was I was I'm to this day I, I was I was unlucky and things but and a couple of things happened that uh, unfortunately, you know, so I lost out but I was also very naive. So so you're a bit pissed over that. And my first game I ever got dropped in my life was in nineteen ninety four after my first test. So it's very difficult at that stage to understand, you know, how to relate with that type of emotions as well. So I, I just missed, I was really uh, in the team and then the last moment I just didn't get picked. And I don't think I was a favorite of Kitches because I, uh, I also, I liked the Afrikaner in the, you know, that he could put in a certain mold. He didn't like uh, Afrikaner with, but uh, that was more intelligent and would ask him, but he didn't like, the, he, he expected stupid Afrikaners to be stupid and just be his guys, you know, and I wasn't, unfortunately, not one of them. But uh, uh, I was also very naive. So then I went back to the Cheetahs, but the emotions, it's amazing, you know, after you get dropped for a test and after you don't make those sides, it's hard because you, you go back and you're alone and it, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> it sounds weird, but you're on your own, you've got to pitch up, you've got to be at practice, you've got to perform. And the guys uh, 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 have to, you know, there's no soft HR that can send you for a bit of uh, barading and, and do it what these emotions you're going through, you know, so... And we were playing a game, and I remember we, it was still on the old, uh, what do you call those, um, north, like you said, the uh, Milibura. Uh, yeah, yes. Western uh, Transvaal. Western Transvaal still, but there those old chicken coops, you know, like the chicken yeah. coop, uh, the Uderoka, we call them. So we're playing there, and it's a bit of a late afternoon game, or evening game. Yes, yeah, so and now, if you went there, these guys were just waiting for you. You know, and now uh, the free state, the name was always a big game. So before the game, our captain said, no, guys, uh, uh, he was a forward. We're going to, this game, we're going to make a commitment. We're going to scrum hard. We're going to know forward stands in the back line. We're going to do our hard work, clean and everything, you know. And it's okay. We like this. Uh, you know, if we have to commit because we have to dominate them up front. You know, so we scrumming and we're driving and we're cleating rucks. You know, in the first move, he's in the back line, catching the ball, passing, playing like a center. And you think, yes, but you just told us, let's commit. But you're not committed yourself. We're doing all this hard work and you're catching it. Uh, it doesn't work that way. You should be leading us. So we go in the back line again, you know, and we're working hard. And it's about, say, 25 minutes into the game and, and, and again in the back line. Yes, but now suddenly we get a knock on and eventually uh, Western Transvaal scores. And we're like, we're like under pressure. It's like 15 all and everything's just not working right. You pissed off because the captain said one thing and he's not doing it. And, you know, and I'm standing behind the poles. Yeah, you know, okay, a bit of embarrassing one. And I've got my number one free state with my red socks and my black pants and my white uh, jersey, but I'm standing with my hands on my knees. And there's an oak sitting right here behind me with his old family, and he says, Oli LaRue, he likes you so spar farky. <laughs> and uh, my reply was that some uh, uh, parts of his mother was looked more like a like a piggy bank than I did, which wasn't really much it was much less elo eloquent than that. And when I remember when I told the story to Kabos for the best days, and he laughed so much because every time he looked at me, he saw piggy bank, you know, and it was actually one of the best chirps I ever had. But my reply wasn't so uh, at taste; it wasn't in the best of taste. And then they dropped me the next game. And they dropped me for Henry Borsov, you know, which is a good player, but he was never, and, and it was amazing. To, instead of coming, calling you, saying, yes, guys, you know, you, you're so out of character. Why are you, why are you, why are you so frustrated? And they drop you. You know, you know you're going to handle this as well. And uh, that night I was sitting at home, and the next minute I had a phone call, and it was uh, Ian McIntosh on the other side. I said, Oli, I see you're not being picked for this weekend. I said, yeah, Mr. McIntosh. He says, but you want to come down to Durban? I said, oh, well, let's do it. He says, but they organized me a play ticket down, me and Henty Martins. We chatted, came back. The rumor came out slightly. And uh, Mac phoned me and said, Oli, what did you do? Get in your car and come down here. We'll sort the stuff out. So I went down. And I, and I saw Mac. I knew him now from 1994. I said, Mac, but there's, there's, there's three players in the freest that I'm telling you, these guys will do well for you. And I got Rassi, Vanner Swanepoel, 
uh, uh, Toki Kasselman and Wee uh, Smith was the other, was a fullback that played for us. He, he didn't play long after that. But all these guys were like quite, they, 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 they really uh, talented players and they all played at the highest level. And if we got them down, they played for collegians, okay? And they played for the collegians B side. And they went back to Free State the next week and, and the Sharks were going to give them a, like a contract. And the next minute, they all got picked for the Free State side and Max still phoned me and he said, Ollie, you prick. <laughs> I said, what's wrong, man? He says, that's actually brought, man. They've picked them all for the bloody Free State side now. They're a much stronger side. They had that flipping Joe Birkus in the side. He's just big. He's, there's nothing. But this, Erasmus is much more intelligent. And uh, I believe that's where Rassi and Smiley and Toki Kasselman actually gained, got their break. By moving to the Sharks, having playing a club game there, and the show this free state realizing, but they're going to lose these guys if they're going to not give them an opportunity. And from there, you, you know, their, their careers are, are and that, that, that was so innocent at that stage. But that's how we had to do. That you know, coach would phone you on the phone, you get in your car, you go. They sort all the stuff out. Nowadays, with these agents and with all the stuff, there, there, there's, there's no, no more honor if you if you give your word and you say I'm coming, you should be able to do a handshake deal. And uh, and that was unfortunately for me having a, a serious, the best chip ever probably in my career is telling me to uh, look like a piggy bank. And uh, my reply wasn't as elo eloquent, but that, that, that just gave me the opportunity to leave the free state and, uh, and, and go back, to, uh, go to the shops where I had an amazing time. A great other chip that we had at, at, at West Transvaal playing now, composer, I told the story, he just laughs. Every time he looks at me, he just sees this piggy bank, you know. And uh, the next minute, he says, yes, he was playing there one day, also same late at night. He says, and while he was running there, and he was standing on the wing, gold in the free state, you know. The next minute, this uh, one actually says, this is Kabos van der Westeisen. You are at near Griesen as my fourth tracker. <laughs> He says, what do you say to that, bro? And they say the best act was always Dick Meer. When you ran out on these fields, he'd go and actually be all psyched up. And he'd go, he'd go hey, guys, guys, check. Third row, top of the top to the right. <laughs> Pretty girl, big boobs. Huh? <laughs> they would always just break the, break the ice to get the guys <laughs> focused on the game. So everybody had my their little way to, to adapt to the stresses of the games. <laughs> when you started your international career, um, we we spoke to we spoke to um, Mark Andrews a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I'm going to take my cat out as well now. My cat out. Um, the um, uh, we we spoke to Mark Andrews a couple of weeks ago, and he made his their debut in '94 in that game in Cape Town, where they had to avenge the test that happened the week before. And you and Mark had a similar sort of international career in a way, in that you both went on tour the previous year to Argentina as youngsters. But your test, your test debuts were against England. But you yeah. played in your debut in Victoria in that first test, which was yeah. a disaster. And he I had agree. to make up for it. He had to make up for it the following week. So us about <laughs> that. Test. It sounded like I mean, we I watched that test. I mean, it just looked like a disaster from start to finish. No, no. Once again, it was it was amazing. You know, you're in this whole new world as a as a twenty year old. You know, it's like yes, you don't have no idea. So you just try and have a. Good time, and, and the next minute, um, and that, that was always so fr uh, frustrating. I had, we always had, those days we had national selectors. I think it was about eight of them. And if these guys pitched up at certain games, that you, you knew the selectors were there. So there was one game that I played against England for Free State that they pitched up, and there was a game I played against uh, uh, the Western Province game. They had four selectors for both those games to come and uh, look uh, to see how I played. And the other one was a... Uh, Inter varsity against Western Transvaal, I was scrumming against Maurice Hutt. And they told me the selectors are here to come have a look at you. The Western Province game, because Gary Pagel was playing on the other side to come and have a look at you. And then obviously I had the game against, uh, I still remember I was, uh, all the, Sandberg Janssen still said it, it was the most beautiful game he'd ever seen a prop I was running with that victory book, pulling him behind me, running, you know, creating gaps. And, and in those days, it just didn't happen. You understand? So it just, it was just a perfect game for me. And, uh, and both of those games, uh, we are, especially one against Province and against Western Transvaal, my uh, old uh, Tad Guerta came to me. I said, uh, he said, yeah, Oli. He said, well done. I said, yes, well, I do. He says, no. Uh, I spoke to the selectors and they all just shook their heads and said, no, it's not even a, it's not even a contest. 
that's how much you've done well. Well done. Yeah? Because Morris Ritter was a tough scrummage and he was strong. And the guy like Gary was obviously, he was elusive, you know, and, and, and I had to prove myself against him at the end of the day. And on the field, just what I did, how I worked at how I scrum against Tommy Lopes, everything just, you know, I was just a, a better player, uh, according to them at that stage, still a youngster. And then you go to the test, but at those days, we were only allowed to gather on the Thursday. Bef the, the Wednesday yeah. before the test. We weren't allowed to be there before that. So the week before the test, Mac flew me into uh, 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 the Wanderers here, and I pitched up there for a scrubbing session on the Tuesday. So he says, guys, listen here, you guys basically going to make the test team. So you must uh, just um, get ready. So we had that one just scrum session, and we met each other on the Wednesday. And we had to go through this uh, stupid captain's runs and try and do a bit of everything to get everybody to gel. And what everybody forgets is this English side got hammered in Bloemfontein. They got hammered by the Bulls. They got hammered by, uh, um, what do you call it, by, uh, I think, a Western province. And they were being ridiculed in the press. But what was happening, while they were playing, they were becoming a flippin' good team. You know, understand that we're becoming a battle-hardened team. We had a lot of battle-hardened individuals. I don't, wouldn't call myself one at that stage. But we had all these guys, but they never played together as a team. So when we hit them on that day, they were just much more, they were a, a better team than us. And we didn't play. I, I watched the game over a couple of times. And they just caught us a great kick, good bounce, a good drop goal by Rob Andrews. Uh, we had uh, Francois that, that that, uh, you know, he had a lot of power and him and Mac were seeing together. A guy like Tian was in the team and I know him and Hannah Stratum both had injuries, but they, in those days, if you had an injury, you didn't say anything. <laughs> you played with that injury because it was just too, too big a thing. So, uh, and then after the game, I, I remember, I think I was under correction, but I think Hannah Stratum and uh, um, uh, Tian was injured. They got uh, uh, given the boot, uh, and he picked your handler Ru at 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 at, at nine instead of US because he wanted to play more of a kicking game. Yeah, yeah. Run Ru was, yeah, I, th I think it was something like that. And then he moved Bali from tight head to loose head, and he brought in uh, Johan. Was it Johan Leroux that he brought in? So so Bali couldn't play above me on loose head, but. You know, so I, got, I was the one that, I was just like the unlucky number. I, I got the X. I didn't really believe I played that bad. I actually worked the game. I actually didn't play bad. I was much more. But the whole effect of that team, and then what was amazing, Mark got his chance in the team that, that, that was winning. You know? So if you're playing in a winning team from there, you know, obviously you're going to go. And, and then we had the tour to, um, what do you call it, to uh, New Zealand. And uh, the other guys, we, you know, that tour to New Zealand was a very tough tour, a long tour. And, and then, uh, uh, lucky for me, unlucky for Johan Larry, but old Sean Fitzpatrick's year. And that gave me a gap. And, and, and I ended that tour being on the bench for the Springboks, you know. So I was, I was a little bit unlucky in that, uh, uh, the, you know, just the youngster, you're always going to, we want experience. And, uh, but it was amazing. Nobody found me. I had to find out, the, I think it was on TV or in the newspapers. Nobody, uh, uh, you don't get anybody to just tell you, listen here, this is what you did wrong, where you're going. You just got dropped, boom, see you later, buddy. <laughs> and then you had to fight your, it was the weirdest. Well, I believe nowadays there's, there's at least channels of communication. You can you can see when things aren't going well. The guys very seldom get dropped nowadays. They rather get uh, arrested or they get other players because the level of players have, have, have gone. But it was a quite a... It was the weirdest thing. My first game I ever got dropped in my life was after the test, and I didn't play badly. And a guy like Mark then went, yes, and he, he had a phenomenal, you know, from these. In my eyes, people talk about, but he's def definitely one of the top uh, 10 uh, locks South Africa's ever produced, top five probably, you know. But that would be disrespectful to the others, the, the other guys. But but he got his gap, and the, 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 the things just fell right for him. And, uh, and I, that's why, I, if I look back at my career, if I think about it now, that even with professional rugby today, I would much more prefer them to, to allow a player to become a professional when he's 23. Because I believe you'll have a much more mature individual. You'll have much more chance to allow them to, 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 to study, to, to get skills outside of rugby and, and use the rugby as a, as, as a just, just if, you, if you're going to make it at that level. But you have a much well-rounded individual that can, you can always play for a long time, but you can never build up skills for a long time. And I believe, uh, you know, there's a big gap in rugby there because uh, certain players, the money they're making now, it's worth it. But 
you know, life stops after rugby. It doesn't stop. Life carries on and you need skills to, to adapt to that. And that's been the biggest uh, adaptation. And, and I think the guys are on a good wicket today, uh, making good money. And uh, my wife told me, you know, can't you make a bit of a comeback? I said, I probably could. <laughs> but I don't know if they'll allow me to play like I did in the old days. Because uh, we were still rucking and we were still going in with no shoulders. And, uh, and that, that's the amazing thing about sport. No top sportsman can claim he's, he's uh, alpha. That a lot of it's got to do with a bit of luck, a bit of at the right time, at the right place, somebody believing in you and, uh, and, 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 and to not take it too seriously. And I think sometimes we tend to take it very seriously. Did you, um, you, you then went from, from there. I can't remember you playing under Kitch. I had one one game on the kitch. Uh, we played Samoa just before the World Cup. And and I, was on the bench. I was on I was on the bench for that game with Mona Fisser as well. Okay. You know, and then and then where I got the I got banned a bad uh, bad it was a, it wasn't a hand a bad one. I played it was James myself and Maurice Herter was playing for I think the president's side, the last game before the World Cup team got announced against the Western Province side. And yeah. Province had a, had a good side, but they had uh, 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 Patterson, uh, Keith Andrews, and uh, Pagel yeah. play against mm. us. Now, Patterson can speak to any hooker out there. Yes, he was a scrumming hooker. Okay, and he can speak to any guy out there. James Dalton was not a scrumming hooker. Okay, so, so James was a quick striker, but he was never, if you wanted to scrum hard, uh, James wasn't the guy you wanted next to him because he, he just, he was just too short. It's very difficult with a short. If you think of the, when Beast killed that poor Vicri like that, you know? If you look back at it, they picked a short hooker, okay? And it allowed Bismarck to take out the tall, a tall hooker just takes out because of the, 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 the angles that they go in. And it allowed Beast to annihilate poor Vicar, Vic, Vicari, you know? And we had the same thing because James was short, and now you also haven't played together this president's side, and you're going to play Western Province, Alan Sonimals, you're not going to make the team. You can imagine how psyched up the Oaks, man. Right? And uh, and that game, the first time I remember, I was still scrumming. As we went down, and as I went to scrum, I just felt my right hand lift here, and Bagel and Patterson had annihilated the poor Morris Hurta on my right hand side. And they had just killed him in the scrum because poor James had left him alone. And uh, obviously, it, you know, what are you going to do then? Uh, I had Keith Andrews against me, uh, and he was a wily old guy, never gave you an easy you know, route. And, uh, and then at the end of the game, it was they basically said, which guy are we going to pick? And they went for a guy like like Gary, which was it was also yes, it's, it was difficult in those days. You didn't have statistics. You didn't have. It was just a, a whole different world than today. You know. Brenda, you're going to ask him. I thought you were about to ask something. No, no, I was listening. I was just nodding my head. <laughs> Gary, on go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So you didn't. So you missed out in World Cup selection. You mentioned Kitch earlier that uh, you felt that maybe he was a bit prejudiced against um, Afrikaners, thinking that they were dumb, and he didn't. He wanted a. He wanted. A, he, he didn't. He couldn't really relate to an intelligent Afrikaner. Is that really what you were saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, unless it was Francho Pino, because Francho was. Uh, <laughs> he, 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 he even Kitch worked well together. So I wouldn't. And Henny Larue as well. So. But for the mold that he saw me, I believe he didn't like because I was an outspoken guy and asked questions. And what happened is uh, they went on tour at the end of the year and a guy called Ian Hutton, that you guys might remember, he was a flag and he moved to Titan, okay? Yeah. So he picked a guy like Ian Hutton because he believed rather the devil I know than the devil I don't. So he had this big team of Transvaal guys around him, okay? Which he worked through Francois and he, Francois, you know, Kids worked with friends for all the individuals, so they had their special relationship. And then he came to me and he said, Yo, I miss, you know, after everything I've told you, now, he told me, this was the weirdest thing. He said, You're my fifth best loose in South Africa at the moment. <laughs> I said, okay, you must explain this to me now because I don't understand this. He said, No, first I've got us, okay, and up till that point, us never played above me. Eh? You must understand that, okay? I said, Okay, no, well done. He says, And then it's Bali. <laughs> he says, okay, no, he's never, but that's fine. He says, now I've got Gary Pagel, okay, and I've got a Bobby, and then he goes, who was the other guy that he picked? I said, oh, I say, I don't know, and then I was the fifth guy. I looked at him, I thought, but yeah, this is hard because it doesn't make sense because I know what all the selectors have told me up to here, they've watched the games, it was never even a contest because I was like, I'm a good rugby player, understand, but okay, I don't fit into your mold. But that leaves you in a place where you're thinking, yes, if this like, thinks I'm that good, no matter what I do, I can't go to him with video footage and say, yes, coach, but just check this out. 
you know, just explain to me why certain teams have players marking me only. Yeah. They'll have one player that's got his whole thing is just to mark me, to make sure I don't get the ball. None of those other actually even make that impact, you know, but it was never that relationship. So he thought, yes, so I went on December, a normal, easy way, and then they went on tour. And the next minute, the guys, uh, uh, while on tour, some uh, say Tox got injured. Was it Tox that went on that tour? I think Tox, no, he went on the, after the World Cup. Yeah, yeah, and, after uh, the World Cup. Too, too, no, he went after the World Cup with kids. But say, so, so, and then, say, so Bali got injured. And the next minute, Ian Hutting played Lucy. <laughs> so it was like, you know, I'm another six bits guy, you know. Surely you could have flown me over, yeah, but it doesn't make sense. So I left it. And they came back the next year, but now the, the free state had a problem because it was between me and us. And yeah. with me playing well, they couldn't, they didn't want to play also ahead of me. So then they started going saying, yes, in 94 they did it. They said, but can you play hooker? And I could play hooker at that stage. And they said, but let's try and make you a tight end because they were looking for a place for, for me and us to play together. And Naka was a good hooker. I played the 94 final. I played at hooker you know, mm-hmm. to allow us to be in the team and me because we had such a big impact. And, uh, and then Kitsch called, we had a camp, and I was playing tight head. We still gave Canterbury 50 away of the Free State Cheetahs, and I was playing tight head, and me and us, we were doing a good job. And, uh, and he called me, but I wasn't unfit. I wasn't, I wasn't fit. I was very, I was very unfit. Now I could play, but I wasn't in good shape. Like, if, you know, if, you know, if you don't have motivation, so you might get fit as it goes. And, and he called me and he said, but why aren't you fit? And, and I looked at him, I said, why do you want me to be fit? He said, yeah, oh, but you can make a massive impact on this team and you can play so many positions. And, you know, I said, but you told me I'm your fifth, six, and then you showed me I'm your sixth bit Lucy. It doesn't make sense. But you told me I'm not good enough and now you come and tell me I'm good enough. So what am I now? Because I don't understand what you want from me. Yeah. And he looked at me and you could see, I said, but then you lied to me when you said I'm the fifth guy because now I'm suddenly third and second again. You know, I, just, I don't understand now. What, what am I now? You know? And I remember Heisi was standing next to him looking at me with eyes this big going, Jesus, we just shut, the, shut up, you know? And, and but I said, I don't understand because you're lying to me. This is what you told me. This is what you did. Why? And I said, okay, don't worry. I'll get fit because I wasn't scared to get fit. I love training even to this day. And then what happened is uh, I started getting shin splints. I did too much too early and, and I just struggled, you know? And, and I think then it was just, we just never... Uh, he, he, I think he, 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 we never got a chance to build a relationship. I could never really prove to him. I was, you know, so, and then it just happened by the way. So, but I, I was on, you know, in the World Cup, if something happened, I was definitely the next guy to be called up. I was on that reserves list and everything, you know, be it as it may. But they also learned a lot where, 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 you know, you've got to not let other people uh, design your destiny. You must do it yourself. You must, if you go out there and you decide, I want to do something, don't let people, other people decide for you what you must do, what you can't do. Great book, Victor, Victor Frankl's Man Search for Meaning. If you want to do something, do it. Don't let other people tell you you can or you cannot, you know, and from there, you can only be rewarded. But it was, it was an interesting time looking back at big mistakes that I made. Then We just didn't have mentors. We didn't have people that would tell you, just relax, my friend. Work hard, you know. It, it was then it was, it was brutal. You're in, you're out. Boom, we, we picked a guy. I remember before the, the, the 94 tour, you know, the Springbok team was going on tour and there was a team that played at Northern Transvaal, a president's team, because Mac needed a guy on tour just to play rugby. Because in those days, it was very important for you to play rugby. I'm going to tell you a story of playing rugby now. And the next minute, uh, I think the, the, the Northern Transvaal gave the guys 55 at Loftus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, that old team, I think it was before the 94 the test that I was played. Before, 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 David, was before the test. Yeah. <laughs> all the selectors were there. So what happened? You know, suddenly we had this old team was filled up with all the Transvaal guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how fickle yeah. rugby was at that stage. There was no succession or this is how we would like it. And the provincialism was crazy. You know, and I remember all the, all F.R. Mayron and Yanni Klaassens, they made the center combination. You know, because in those days, it was a lot for picking combinations. And I remember they had a, a move called a wing cut. A wing cut. So what would happen, they would run and they would come and the wing would come back. But the New Zealanders always had the eight defending of the back of the line out to cover the inside for the wing cut. <laughs> yes, it's a perfect boast for the best days. It was a good finisher, but at the best of days, he was not a crash ball runner. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kabos was running this wing cut with Yanni and every year, and eventually the guys, hey, wing cut, wing cut, are you playing Waikato or Taranaki in this flipping place that people are going mad, you know? 
and they're screaming, wink it, wink it. Kabais <laughs> is standing there with his hair, and he rolls it like that. He says, hey, no, boys, man. She's about four quarter wink at here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, but that was a tough tour, and uh, and what was amazing is, the, on that tour, it was such a nice time for the guys to get together, but unfortunately, with provincialism, it was so difficult at that stage. The guys, uh, the relationships between provincial teammates was just too strong. It was very, if you look at the Springboks now, the guys, uh, even in that 95 World Cup, there was a lot of provincialism, you know, and, and Franchot man, managed with Kitsch to, 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 to bridge that. And they, I believe they picked a lot of guys that there were maybe one or two better guys out there, but they, they believed that could make their team stronger. <laughs> in guys believing the same thing because of the provincialism. A good example would be a Tian Strauss. You know, if you look at a Tian Strauss, yes, he was a really good rugby player, but they just never felt that he would bring uh, he would bring a bit of discord because that was a big problem at that stage for us. It became much better year from 2007. After that, it became much better. The guys were much more uh, easier, but but up to then it was tough, you know, with that Bulls team doing very well. There was always, but, but the guys sorted themselves out nicely. You you went after after the missing out, obviously a huge disappointment, missing out in the '95 World Cup. But you you came back into into the Springbok plans when Warcraft took over, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember you told me that you told me about a story about him. He really liked his loud scrums, <laughs> and when you guys were on the scene. When you guys are overseas, you, you, you try to get out of doing live scrums one afternoon because you, 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 if, if, if one guy was sick, then you wouldn't do the live scrums. And he used to always ask you, tell us that story. <laughs> now what happened is, Mark, but, but, but it was frightening because now we're professional and the guys are paying you, okay? So now this yeah. is great. So you'd pitch up at a practice and Mark had your practice detailed for you. There would be 250 live scrums, yeah. of which there would be 100 extra scrums against the scrum machine. You pitch up at the field, and there would be the police pack. Then there would be the Northern Transvaal pack, the Northern Transvaal B team pack, and there would be the, the, the rest of the Springboks. Yes, Ruth. So you'd have like a fitness session for an hour and a half, and then you'd start scrubbing, okay? Now, no matter what happens, you can go back and you can look. Uh, uh, Morris Hunter's uh, uh, career actually ended with those scrubbing sessions in 1996. His back was totally went. And, and he, I don't think he ever played for the Springboks after that again. If I'm not mistaken, okay. Yeah. But this was crazy because you just had the scrumming session of the scrum. It was just, and, and it's as good as it is. Yes, it's not. It's not fun, you know. Especially the live sessions because the guys would climb in big time. And uh, if you did badly, you can imagine. And every time you had to run to the next pack, this like was resting while you were going around the field doing fitness. So yes, it was just chaos. So when we went on tour, Minecraft wanted the live session. But what we had, we had myself, Bali and Naka, that were the uh, reserves, and then we had us, uh, John Allen, and uh, uh, who was the tight did Morris Hurter, okay? So those were the only props that we had. So we very quickly realized that if there's only one person, we can never do live scrums, because the machine was easy to scrub against, but because you just had to, just the hard, but the live scrums were tougher. And the next minute we said, no, okay, guys, it was like an unwritten thing. Every practice, one guy would just have a shoulder injury, or it, Feel his heavy twins, or just say, yeah, my neck's not right, or his pick would be hurt this morning, or you know, it just worked out perfectly. And we got to the one session, we had a full on good hour and a half session. They were still at Manly Beach. You went up there, was this mountain where there was a, or this hill where there was a, a military base. We trained there at this military base. So we were there, we finished our session. Yeah, so we're on our way back, and Minecraft blows the whistle. He says, Come here, props. The hookers come here. So we're standing, all six stand in front of it. He says, are you guys feeling? He says, no, we're feeling good. He says, so listen here. Uh, any injuries? No, no, we're feeling good. He says, no, listen to me carefully. If one of you bastards, don't pitch up for tomorrow's last coming session with the injury, okay? I will send you home. <laughs> okay, sorry, coach, you got us. <laughs> so we realized tomorrow's last come. So we go, yeah, you know, coach, but you can't. This is not okay. All he wants us to do is 60 live scrubs, Okay. So we do five live scrums, and then after everyone, you run around like the post. So you're on the center line, so you run. 
But now we had Henny Backer that had to fill in with the reserves. We had Andre Fink, the poor Bali was hitting Austin John Allen and Mia Naka with uh, with Maurice Herter. And uh, uh, we, we we had with Henny we we had one we had just had enough okay the players. So so we were we were we were much lighter, you know, it was Johan Ackerman, Mark Andrews, uh, uh, uh uh, Ruben Kruger, uh, 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 Gary Teichman, uh, all those guys, I didn't, uh, uh, Francho Pino, uh, Os, uh, uh, John Allen, and and, uh, and Morris Hurt, all 115 kilogram pack against us. And, you know, we were a bit lighter, but we gave everything. And so we go one, two, three, four, five scrums, we run. We go one, two, three, four, five scrums, we run. We go, and now Mark looks at one stage, he says, where are we now? I said, 25, sir. Yeah, and he looks at me. Yeah, and I can see he's lost track of <laughs> where we are. But I knew we were 20, so we had, I'd, lied, I'd lied five scrums there. Yeah, so you could check, he's like, he knows, I'm, I, but he's not sure. So, so he takes, okay, we were 25, so okay, I got us five scrums off. So we go, so we're scrumming, scrumming, and say we were on 50. He says, where are we now? I said, 40, 10 to go, coach. Yes, now he looks at me and you can see, but, but it's full on, huh? full on. There's no half ways. If there's one half scrum, you do it over. Yeah, so we go, and we got the last five scrums left. Okay, yes, but now this time we batted poor Bali's about four inches shorter. Uh, Mario's had this really <laughs> good. John Allen's getting psyched up. So we have five scrums to go. So we do our last five scrums. But now this was just 50. I, I, I think I got us about 10 off. Yeah, and uh, Mark Rob, he knows I'm bullshitting him, but he doesn't know why. So he goes, okay, we're going to do the last five scrums. I said, okay, but this is the last five. He says, yeah, so we go one and the last scrum. He says, okay, guys, this is the last scrum. Big effort now. So we as the spot pillars, we call ourselves, get together. They come there the bomb squad now. I think <laughs> I went for, 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 the, for, the, for, the, for the for the bench was a bit, uh, they couldn't uh, call it on the national, international TV. And uh, we, call, so we call together. So we said, guys, come on. You know, these acts have hurt us now for 50 scrums. And they, and they but they just come bolly you. Just give us one. We just go for one. We hit them. We go. We scrum as hard as we can. We got to do this. So before I say, so Markov, this is the last scrum. He says, last scrum, no problem. Okay, okay, you ready? So we go. But yes, I don't know why, but I think we just got it right perfectly. We hit in. We were tight. We were low. As the ball came in and John Allen wanted to hook, we just scrummed them and it looked like popcorn on the other side, like the Oaks were just flying out. So now we're running around, hands in the air. Yeah, we won. We won. We, the champ, we, we got the best scrum of the day. And Markov goes, no, come back. I said, you said it was the last scrum. You lied to us. This is the last scrum. Yes. And he was like, shut up, you little shit. Come scrum. I said, no, but you said it's the last scrum. Yeah, so he said, no, okay, sorry. Can't fight too long in that battle. So we got back. Now you can imagine how pissed of these perks were here. So, so we got hammered the past the last couple of scrums. So now we get up. Now it's a good feeling. And myself and Andre Fint, the he's most crazy. He said, okay, let's run back to the hotel. I said, okay, cool. The next minute, Francis says, come in, guys, come in, guys. So we come in. So he says, you know what, guys, that's unacceptable. No, I think he's a little, no, okay, maybe I was a bit out of line or we were a bit, you know. He said, how can this reserve pack scrum us like that? He said, that's not right. Come, run up the tackle bags, 75 tackles. Come, we got to lift down intensity. Yes, and front to line up see those tackle bags. And then, now what do you do as a reserve? <laughs> this is boys. So then we must started climbing in and, and, and Francho led that session after all those scrums and then that, he was he was very good like that as a leader. You know, when, when we got those fitness sessions and stuff, he would say it's, uh, it's unacceptable. And uh, uh, we lost that game, but but the Aussies beat us not through they did not play us, they out, they outthought us, they never outplayed us, you know, they were a little bit of a smarter team than us there. And we were very unlucky the next game as well against the All Blacks. Yes, we were very unlucky because it was a close game, but they were they just had these street smarts about them that, that we as South Africans we were we like these just fizzy in your face and we, we wanna fight this battle like uh, you know, old style, new style, but we're ready to roll, but they they just out 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 I played us with, with with a bit more structure and understanding the modern game better than us. So, so we did, it wasn't a good tour that one, but when we came back, we uh, we, we, we gave them some nice hidings there. But that was one of the, the funniest sessions ever to see Andre Markroff looking at you and realizing <laughs> he's not going to allow this beating to, to beat the test side, you know. And uh, and those were the things that, that, that we pull you together because they, they were tough sessions, you know, and the guys were on the field. There was no, no. Uh, a great example for that as well was uh, in 1998, Nick Mallet 
you know, this when they had this whole bomb squad thing that everybody's talking about. What people don't realize is how important the, the spar pillar, as we used to call them now, the bomb squad is because we would have training sessions on Tuesday. And I always remember Gary would say, no, 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 get them to wear um, contact shields, okay? And we'd look at Mac, uh, that, that Nick, uh, yeah, and Nick, and then Max just run us to pieces. Let us leave our hand, give us body shoots, okay? So the practice would start, and it would always be, you know, it would be uh, full on, full contact, but controlled contact. So it wouldn't be, but we would climb into each other like you do not understand. We would, and it would be a big thing because they'd often have the, some development players coming in and we'd get them in our team and say, listen, your boys, you must understand, we're playing test bats right here now. This is a Tuesday practice, full contact. But that made the test team at that stage so uh, toughened them up. So when they played the games on Saturday, they were used to contact. And, and, and years later when I played for Leinster, uh, Mike Brewer was our coach. He was the All Black uh, eighth man, and uh, he, he, we can remember on a Tuesday. Yes, and we were there, but we had easy sessions in the week. It was tough, but nothing. But the Tuesday, fully strapped, mouth guard, twenty minutes of full contact, scrumming, driving, defence. I look at him. I say, Yes, you might. You guys, are, yeah, I, I enjoy this contact, but this is like close to the game. Why are you doing it? He says, No, 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 Ollie, We haven't had contact for a long while, and the guys must keep, they must be used to contact before they play a game. And I remember Dispatch used to do that in the old days. They'd have a Thursday training session where they'd have 25,000 people on that stadium and it would be the A team versus the B team. Whether they have 20 minutes. And I think people don't realize the value of that contact. That 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 Because you only get put under pressure and you only play well when you... And that team, if you look at the 1998 team with Nick Mallet, we won a lot of games coming back. We were always stronger uh, at the end part of the games. We were in the, uh, the beginning, anything could happen, but, but, but the, we knew how to fight. We were, we were a tough, tough side. And, and uh, that's what the Minecraft also tried to do, uh, uh, I believe, there in 1996. And, and he got it so right. And uh, uh, unfortunately, then he got taken out by that uh, uh, totally out of uh, place remarks that he made, you know, and, and which was sad because he was busy building actually a, a very good team. And,